Hi everyone, Vito Corleone here with Rhyme Signatures, the nerdiest music review this side of collapsing in your garden whilst playing with your darling grandchildren. And today we're going to be doing a review of the new Destrage album, So Much, Too Much. Okay, so I've been an on-again, off-again fan of Italian experimental metal act Destrage for a little while now. My gateway into their uniquely eclectic style was the absolutely batshit 2014 record. Are you kidding me? No. And I subsequently dove back a little bit further to the equally crazy The King is Fat and Old from 2010. Now, for me, both of these records represented a kind of off-kilter madness that you kind of don't really hear a lot of in music these days, taking little pinches of sixth, uh, protest the hero and a little bit of Dillinger escape plan and kind of mixing it all together into this kind of uniquely self-deprecating style with a kind of a bit of a bleak comedy and a keen awareness of themselves. Destrage were a, a fascinating look into just how weird metal could be without sacrificing any sense of melody or accessibility. I mean, yes, this music is odd, but it also makes you kind of want to get up and groove, throw yourself around a bit and yell alongside the, at uh, times, baffling lyrics, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, I was a big fan, and Are You Kidding Me? No easily landed in my top five records of 2014, and it's still something I revisit pretty often, and honestly, never fails to entertain. But, I don't know, I felt like something kind of happened in Team Destrage, and I'm kind of still struggling to figure out what went wrong... 2016's A Means to No End and 2019's The Chosen One really lacked something crucial, I felt, that the preceding records had. There was no bite, no teeth, no frivolity and fire. The Italian passion that made the earlier work so fresh and interesting kind of seemed to have just gone. Destrage's most recent records had felt like going from a wild, untamed animal to something neutered and caged. I mean... <laughs> Don't get me wrong, that's not to say that A Means to No End and The Chosen One were explicitly bad records. They weren't. They still had some fun moments on them. But it kind of felt like they were written by a band that didn't entirely know what they were doing anymore and weren't too sure where their future was taking them. I don't know, this is just me. So, enter stage left, so much, too much. Now, I obviously approached this record with a bit of caution because, well, you know, I've had two albums in a row now. That's kind of left me a bit cold. Um, I won't lie, I'd started to become a little bit disinterested in the band, lacking the faith that they could really recover from what I felt was the rut they'd dug themselves into. So, how is this one? Is this old school or new school? Has the muzzle come off at last, or has the king truly gotten fat and old? It's kind of a bit of both, I'll be honest with you. So Much Too Much is definitely a marked improvement on the records that have immediately preceded it. But I still feel there's an element of caution and restriction hanging over the songwriting compared to their earlier releases. I mean, things at least don't hang around here with Opener, a commercial break that lasts forever. It kind of sets things off really nicely with some appropriately chaotic and atonal sounds with some great frenetic guitar work, really furious drumming peppered throughout. And it certainly gives off a really good first impression. You know, this is a great way to start a record. Following up with lead single, Everything Sucks and I Think I'm a Big Part of It, which is def dangerously relatable, <laughs> is a song definitely taken from the pages of their 2014 magnum opus, kind of scratching a familiar itch of syncopated rhythms and screeching vocals with some undercutting by some great cleans and some really technical guitars. And it starts to remind me kind of like why I paid attention to this band in the very first place. I mean... Sure, it's no destroy, create, transform, sublimate, but regardless, it's still a lot of fun. There's some really fantastic grooves and catchy melodies amidst the chaos, and it serves as a really good continuation of a dynamite start to the record. Third track, Venice Has Sunk, probably going to be what I would call my favourite song on the album. It's got what I feel is some of the most interesting instrumentation on offer, and god, this is absolutely Killer bass section. Jesus, it's so good. It just like my jaw just drops every time. It's just mm, love it. You, you, you won't miss it. It's really good. It's a bit of a spicy track with some nice peaks and valleys across its runtime, moving from some gentle interludes to complete face melters in equal measure across its duration. The album progresses kind of nicely over the midpoint, with 
Italian boy, private party and an imposter, filling out some kind of okay ideas and things going on. <laughs> There's nothing much too exciting though really happening on these songs and honestly these more than anything feel like the tracks you would find on the more muted recent releases than from their early days. They're perfectly fine, you know, but I don't know. They feel perhaps a little bit too safe and cautious for me. I don't know. At least by the standards the band set up in the past, at least, anyway. Okay, look. I'll just clarify something here. Just because I sound like such a, a negative Nelly at the moment. I don't mind the safer, more melodic and muted Destrage. It's still good music. It's still well-written and well-produced and it's perfectly fine. But I think that's part of the problem for me. It's, it's fine. It's not exciting or heart-pumping. And I feel Destrage are at their absolute best when they embrace the chaos and savagery in their mind's eye. But I will happily listen to these mid-tier tracks, you know, I'll still be enjoying myself, but I'll be constantly thinking, you guys can do better than this, and I know you can because I've heard it a lot. A brief feature from wonderful human being Devin Townsend on Private Party is nice and it's always pleasant to hear him. It's quite a catchy song in general with a very hummable chorus. And I don't know if it's just my ears or not, but I feel like the chorus kind of reminds me a little bit of a radio-friendly corn. Like, borrowing stuff from like their Issues or Untouchables era. I don't know, it might just be me, but I really do get a certain Jonathan Davies vibe from the melodic delivery of the vocals here. And I don't mean that in a negative fashion at all, I, you know, it's, it's more of an observation than anything. I mean, Christ, I loved corn back in the day when I was like 15. That was, that was my jam, I loved that stuff. The back half of this record bizarrely contains a cover of Stone Temple Pilots' Vaseline, and yeah, it's, it's pretty good. I mean, I've never been a huge proponent of STP, but I've never switched off them if they came up on a random rotation or anything like that, but... Vaseline has, well, it's always been a fun track, and Destrage's take on it is pretty, pretty damn good, actually. They do a really good job of owning the song and making it their own so it kind of fits within the album, but it also really does keep quite faithfully to the original, you know, it's a very respectful cover. It's just a bit curiously placed in the track order, though. You know, these sort of things, like these covers, they're normally tacked onto the end as, like, bonus track or anything like that. But this weirdly kind of takes pride of place, kicking off the final quarter of the album. And I'll be honest, it's it's kind of this last quarter, though, where so much, too much kind of start to lose me a little bit. I've been jonesing for some of the hard-edged chaos of the first third or so, and whilst there's still a good bit of heaviness and groove to be found, with some great screams and passionate energy... I still felt there was a little bit too much safety and caution with some simpler melodies and far more basic instrumentation going on. Your mileage will definitely vary with this though, of course, as you might prefer this form of destrage, and you know, that's fine, that's valid. I mean, ultimately, of course, this is just a review, this is just my opinion on the matter, and you should never treat, like, the word of one guy on the internet as gospel. But I am, without a doubt, a fan of the angry, insane, and fearless Destrage, rather than this more slow-paced and melodic version. And, honestly, I feel that I can get from that, from other bands, but done a little bit better. So, I mean, what else can I say at this point about so much and too much? Ultimately, I do still feel quite positive about this record, and it's absolutely a step up from their more recent output, and I'd easily call it their best record since Are You Kidding Me? No. There is certainly a pinch of salt to be taken in this recommendation, though, as uh, while I have absolutely enjoyed this album, you know, it's been fun, and there are quite a few songs on it that I will be coming back to quite a bit, you know. I just don't... I don't know, I just don't feel that this has the staying power that the band's earlier work does. Time will tell on this, of course, but I feel that, ultimately, so much, too much, is something of a bit of a mid-tier album for Destrage. And I will say, though, that if this kind of music does spark something within you, and you enjoy this, absolutely check out Are You Kidding Me? No. As it takes the savagery of this album, and it just turns it up to 11. So Much, Too Much does, however, remain a solid and enjoyable release but it's ultimately a little unremarkable and unlikely to have a long-lasting impact on me. This is all, of course, my own opinion, as you know. Tell me what you thought of this record in the comments below. If you have anything that you've listened to this year you think I should check out, then, you know, let me know about it. Maybe I'll get around to giving my own thoughts. If you like this video, please do share it around, thumb it up if you enjoyed it, 
you know, that usual stuff, which helps me out metric-wise. And do please consider subscribing for some more content. I've still got a whole bunch of stuff I'm working on. Lots of stuff coming. Until next time, guys. Keep your rhyme signatures odd.